Today on the Cool Against, we talk about the Mewis sisters and the demolishing they have done of the Colombian national team. And we also talk about Christian Pulisic and his wild GQ photo shoot. That's right. Plus, we talked to Shane Smith, hilarious comedian, and we asked him what happened that China kicked him out of his first RSL match ever. <laughs> that and more today on the Cool Against! <laughs> Yeah, baby! Yes. Come on! All right. We, yeah, we, we have to scream in joy and <laughs> excitement because we're simply uh, one day away from... No, if, if you're watching this or listening <laughs> to this, it's almost over. <laughs> it's almost over, and it, uh, yeah, it'll be probably... More of the same uh, for the next four years. But yeah. we'll, it also be a little. Kind of feel like it's just starting. <laughs> but we don't want to deal with that at the very least. Okay, we're we're back on Tinder swiping again. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'll be exciting. I just I need to get my groove back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome uh, to the Cool Again. My name is Christian Polanco. That's right. I'm Alexis Guerreros. All right. We are your favorite stand-up comedians that host the funniest soccer show that has ever lived. That's okay? right. It, it, it doesn't just mean we're just the funniest, right? Because if we had to pick something else, just pulling just randomly, you know what I mean? I don't think we've ever said this before, but I'm going to suggest Gulliest. Okay, yeah, pretty good. I look, you know, you you put your hand in the hat of, uh, you know, of adjectives, and look, it keeps popping up all the time. <laughs> right? We spun the wheel, and we were like, big money, big money, big money, big money. Well, big gully, gully, big gully, big gully, big gully. <laughs> <laughs> it happened again. Uh, <laughs> someone someone create that board game, please. <laughs> uh, so, hello. A lot to discuss uh, today, uh, obviously. Uh, if we're, we're talking about the United States of America, the U.S women's national team is in a better uh place right now than, uh, than uh -huh. the country uh because they they uh they had their first uh, match uh friendly against uh colombia the game was played at Exploria stadium uh in orlando it was interesting because there were fans there but the fans were were green screened off they were blocked off by the the graphics in the in the in the stands you know that that, that it was that like Let's pretend they're not there. <laughs> <laughs> let's, okay. let's use technology to promote social distancing. <laughs> what I love about what's happening in the world today is that if you told someone who didn't know anything about soccer, yo, the U.S. destroyed Colombia, they'd be like, why? <laughs> it's his last day. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> they don't need to. <laughs> it seems wildly unnecessary. Were they, were they even at odds? You I know. know. <laughs> Honestly, there's some things they probably agreed on. You know? <laughs> Uh, but no, look, the, the U.S. women uh, obviously dominate. And, and there's a lot of, you know, there needs to be some context here. Colombia are, are not in a great place uh, when it comes to their uh, women's soccer uh, at the moment. Because yeah, no one would consider them, uh, you know, some of the top tier. But, but at the very least, I, if they can take anything with them, right? When they walk in the locker room at the end of the match and the coach looks at them and says, hey, we only got beat by one family, you know? <laughs> right? you okay, it? Look, look, it could have been, you know, the Rapinos, <laughs> right? the Presses, you know, the Ertzes. We could have gotten walloped by a bunch of people, but really, it was one family. Just... One family tree just <laughs> rocked the shit out of us. But everyone else, we got unlocked. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. The and and, and the, what I'm mentioning uh, specifically is that Colombia has uh, didn't play any matches in 2020. Uh, uh -huh. The women's team, which is obviously awful. Um, they were they were flown to uh, to Orlando to play that game from a, by a sponsor, not by the federation. The federation is really. Uh, not look at that. They, they're not. They're obviously prioritizing the the men's team because the men's team are playing World Cup qualifiers and all these other things. Uh, even if they weren't playing World Cup qual qualifiers, we know who they prioritize regardless. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and this has been brought up before. You know about the misogyny <laughs> of the FA down there. It, it is pretty bad, and a lot of uh, you know women's programs uh, deal with this. But then on top of that, um, uh, one a, a player tested positive for COVID. 
Uh, because, you know, what are you going to do? You're in Florida. Right. When in Rome. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, the, uh, but then several other players uh, that were around that player that tested positive had, had to miss the match uh, out, of, uh, you know, out of caution. So they were missing four of their like better players, and they had they, they I think they started like a fifteen year old. I believe there was like a sixteen or seventeen year old that also came into the game. Uh, it was not great. The fact that they only they gave up three goals in the first half and then one in this in the second. It's improvement from two halves. Uh, it's, so it, I, it is. It, it is. I mean, when you look at when you lay out everything that they went through, the fact that they were they only gave up four goals is great. Also to the best team in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, then, uh, and I, I was just going to say, the, and then the Friday, they got to do this again. They're playing again. Yeah. So it'll be the the, B the rest squad, of the players are the like, no, no, no. I was also hanging out with, so maybe <laughs> I don't need to, you know. <laughs> no, that's safety first. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, no, I'm going to just, I'm going to take my Nintendo Switch and go in the hotel. Like, y'all tell me how it goes. If you see any muises, you know, could you tell him to relax? <laughs> okay. I don't know if the, the, the muis, are their parents going to play? Because I'm a little scared of them, all right? Is the muis dog, Airbud going to come into the, <laughs> into the game? <laughs> uh, the other interesting thing for, uh, from this game was the, the beginning of the game because uh, of the obviously it was Martin Luther King Day uh -huh. uh, and they did you know the, the U.S. Women's National Team so we saw this during especially during the NWSL Challenge Cup uh, where the people were kneeling you know uh, to to uh, uh, show support for you know uh, you know what everything was happening in the summer uh, and. They there were several players in this match who did not kneel, uh, right. and and it, it's causing a bit of a stir in uh, you know it, it, within within soccer Twitter with a lot where where people are not understanding uh, or, or 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 trying to at least understand why some players kneel and some do not. Given everything that is going on, why not show this l little bit of support? And I also add that the. All the players are wearing like Black Lives Matter uh, uh, jackets, uh, so right. th there is some show of support. Uh, but the people are not exactly getting it uh, at this point. I, I don't know exactly how to feel, um, but it is. It, it seems like a uh, uh, such a simple gesture for to to do for a, a teammate that is that is that is doing it. I don't really see why why stand at this point. I do. I do want to say, like, yo, don't kneel if you don't want to, so we know, but then answer the question when you're asked. Yeah, yeah. Like, you just know say, I mean? like, I'm standing I, because, you know, yeah. Trump is my homie or whatever. Right, like, right. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to say. <laughs> just and also, can we clip Christian saying that <laughs> just so that I have it <laughs> for future uh, bribery and blackmail? Um, <laughs> but if you're going to not, if you're going to not do it, that's fine. Have an answer. Don't meander. Yeah. Stand. If you're willing to not kneel, stand by your choice. Literally. Yeah. We got more when we get back after this. <laughs> Hey, what's up? It's Roy Virginia from The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, and I kicked it with the Cooligans Living Room FC. Even though technically, if you're in a living room, you wouldn't want a full football club in your living room because that is not COVID compliant. <laughs> Cooligans Living Room FC, and, uh, you know, look, we're going to have an amazing episode today. We're going to talk to Shane Smith. It's going to be funny. But before we do, we need to talk about a massive, massive dilemma in U.S. <laughs> soccer right now, okay? Okay, yeah, it sounds serious. Team. Yeah, I, and it is. Wait till you find out how serious <laughs> this is. Uh, apparently, uh, Christian Pulisic, not injured, no. But he has injured our hearts, okay, and our <laughs> eyes. Uh, he did a photo shoot for GQ, uh, but, and it was photographed by ben, a man by the name of Ben Weller. And I don't know how else to put this besides Ben Weller hates the men's national team. Okay? <laughs> I wouldn't. Okay, look, I know people. This is definitely. Uh, it just dropped a, a couple uh, minutes ago, uh, as when you know, by by the time we're recording this, and it is not the worst. 
photos that I've seen of a, of a, a man modeling clothing or whatever. Um, but it is, it does feel like the photo shoot was done in like 2004. You know what it, I mean? Right? It just, but like also like at one of the photo studios at the mall. <laughs> right? it, it is this, uh, it, the, 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 I really, I'm more concerned about the stylist that they chose because clearly uh, it is, uh, you know, a, a, a dude that uh, that hangs out at a Bensonhurst uh, bar in, yes. in, in, in the in the late aughts. Okay, it, it, uh, th this was styled by a very <laughs> horny, recently divorced, fifty-five year old woman. Because this dude looks exactly like Maroon Five, or whatever the dude's name is from Maroon Five. It, it's yeah. That, that's that's my bigger concern here. Is just that he he probably didn't exactly. Look, I don't know how uh, Pulisic is not really like a, one of the fashion dudes. He's not a brooder. He doesn't brood. And he, <laughs> he looks like he's about to turn into a vampire in a 2003 film. Yeah, yeah, like a, and like he's he want he's like a teen heartthrob. He wants to be like a teen heartthrob at some right. point, right? He in, looks in, like the bad boy on Dawson's Creek. <laughs> if I'm trying to give you an idea, <laughs> it's not that. So that's really the the issue here, and I think. But but also, like the jeans are tucked underneath. It looks like my mom dressed him. They cuff. They got the cuff, bro. Yo, but in 2005, in 2005, in yo, girls would be like, yo, who's the, who that that just walked in? Okay. Cuff out. Yeah, all right, I get it. Right? Put the cuff in. And also, he's wearing what looks like dollar store boots. Right? Homie's wearing the boots that come in a big bin where the laces are tied together. The discount, all right? They want clearance. What are you talking about? And they look like they've never been worn. You can't do that. You got to scuff them up a little bit. Toss them around in the bin. You got to get some from the bottom. Uh, yeah, look, I think, uh, you know, I don't know how much he expected to be. I don't know what he expected. That, that's kind of the main thing. Because when you do a photo shoot, the photographer is like, uh, oh, these look great, Christian, don't they? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they, you, you look at the. There's like a big screen where they yeah, pop up as they, they take pop them, up and everyone's like, like, ooh, or oh. Yeah, because he's like, you know, laying on a couch. He's wearing a, a tank top. Uh, some of these are just they, he's they're just kind of so staring at the camera with his <laughs> mouth open. Like, they're, they're, they're they're what? And they, they, this is the problem sometimes that, that there are some people that are difficult to to sexualize. You know what I mean? And right. Christian Pulisic is one of these people where like his personality is not uh, is not a type of like like if if I did a sexy photo shoot, people would be like, uh, right? what exactly is going on here? <laughs> if I did it, they'd be like, we gotta wipe all this liquid <laughs> off the streets, you know. But here's my you problem: know? it looks like the photo shoot was done by Boston Dynamics. Do you know what company that is? <laughs> yes, I do. It does the robots that dance and stuff? The robot dogs, yeah. <laughs> yes. Homie, homie, don't look human in these photos. Ben Weller, what did you do? Give the kid a scotch, will you? Uh, we need we need a, a reshoot or something. He'll figure it out. Uh, he's growing up. He's a kid. We'll figure it out. All right, everybody. Uh, uh, we got Shane Smith coming up. Uh, so come right back after this. He's 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 playing music. He's doing his thing, uh, and then he's like, "I got something special." Yeah, and brings in the the, the Martin a, Luther King. It's a Martin Luther King. It's the I Have a Dream speech. Yeah. And it's I don't know how else to explain it besides it's laid under what is quite possibly the most stereotypically EDM <laughs> song of yeah. all time. Mm, mm, so mm. it starts off, <laughs> I have a dream. And then it continues to the end of the first sentence. And then the beat drops. And that's when David Guetta just starts like <laughs> dancing. <laughs> To the Yo. He's like, I, I don't know what y'all ain't dancing. I'm feeling it. Why okay, is everyone I'm doing, crying? I'm out here doing a two step for Dr. King. I don't know about you. Oh, I'm sorry. If my shoulder bounce is trying to end hatred, <laughs> what, what are y'all doing? I was y'all making remakes. Okay, I'm trying to I'm trying to shimmy the racism away. Okay? You know, special delivery. We got rid of racism. <laughs> <laughs> all right welcome back to the cool against living room fc and make sure to stick around we will be joined by comedian shane smith hilarious uh comic 
Twitch streamer and heavily tattooed man. Uh, yeah, dude, so that, Christian and I are going to get tattoos during the episode all over our necks, just like him. Stick around and watch. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you're into that sort of thing, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, one thing I want to talk about uh, real quick is uh, this is obviously we're on we're on Fubo TV. We're on Fubo Sports Network. I it's the label that pays me. <laughs> <laughs> and not only are, are, are the Cooligans, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, stock rising outside, you know, with, with Fubo, uh, right. but Fubo Sports Network has been airing more matches uh, the, the last, uh, you know, the last couple months. So this has been pretty exciting. And now uh, Fubo Sports Network, our network will be airing a league on match uh, between Marseille and Lens. Can you That's believe right. it? So the way it works out is the Cooligans are bringing you <laughs> Olympic Marseille fans and RS Lens, uh, Lens fans, RC Lens fans, a match. It's us. It's because of us. A exactly. Yeah. yeah. The, the the game will be on uh, on January 20th uh, at 245 uh, p.m. Eastern time. Make sure uh, to check it out. You can watch it for free. FuboSportsNetwork.com if you don't have uh, uh, Fubo TV. Uh, but there is that feeling of like, oh, League on was like, oh, wait, wait, the Cooligans out there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll go check that. I'll go check out Fubo Sports Maybe Network. Maybe we need to share our product <laughs> with the Cooligans fans. <laughs> and then people are like, but you know, there's other people on the network and they were like we don't need a hero <laughs> you're here because they're cool again <laughs> <laughs> okay uh no but, but pretty exciting obviously uh marseille and and uh you know it, it's look whenever we, whenever we talk about ligon it's always like a psg and everybody else uh but right. they're still uh everybody else is still uh, you know has a lot of skin in the game right they uh marseille are in sixth are they 32 points? 32 points. Are they far PSG from first? PSG maybe got 42, but we don't need to hear all that. <laughs> but, you know, you still there's still a lot of names you remember, especially Dimitri Payet. Remember when he he forced to move out of West Ham because uh, he was like, I, ain't, I don't want to mess with these dudes anymore. Right. I'm done. I'm I want to go. I want to go back to my country. No more ham, yo. Maybe I should go <laughs> Turkey. And then he decided, nah, he went to Paris. But yeah, but remember Gail Kakuda. Remember him? He played for Chelsea like in the in the early teen, uh, 20 teens. Like I think he was there from like 2009 to like 2014. Uh, really fast winger. He's now on lens. So okay, yeah. Maybe you maybe maybe you got a Chelsea kit from back in the day, and you're like, you know what? Maybe I'll show some respect and watch Lens <laughs> just possibly get destroyed by Lens. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, the table in itself, uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, uh, Nice is one of the teams I, I would always focus on because Patrick Vieira uh, had, had gone there from NYCFC, but he's been let go. Uh, yeah. And and so that that's like one one of the other teams where I'm like, what are what are they going to do? What is Vieira? What's Vieira's next job? Where would he where do you think he will go? I don't know, but I'm I'm interested in like first of all, he's probably going to come back to MLS, which would be great. Uh, but Leal, Leal also has uh, Timo Weah on it, so I'm interested in Leal. What's happening? Cor with Leal. Correct. I yeah. Also like I've, what, Leal. One rumor I heard, but this uh, th this was before Chris Armis got hired as a head coach for Toronto. But it, I heard it was Patrick Vieira was was in talks, or that that was that was one of the names on the list that they wanted to get. Dude, that'd be dope. He should go become an assistant in Montreal. Okay. <laughs> How great. Oops. Him and Thierry Henry, bring him back. We got Shane Smith when we get back after this. All right, baby. We're back on the Cooligans Living Room FC. And finally, our guest is here. And I think you guys are going to enjoy this because... He looks like an ultra. He looks like a soccer ultra, but, <laughs> he <laughs> he looks, but he's one of the most polite individuals you'll ever meet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, talk about not judging a book by its cover. It's like, imagine the outside of the book looked like something Megadeth wrote, but the inside was a bit more of a coloring book, you know? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled today. Yeah, this is absolutely amazing. So uh, this dude, a very funny comedian uh, we met on the comedy scene. I uh, just had a couple conversations with him about growing up uh, in in and around Salt Lake. I'm not sure if he's exactly from Salt Lake. I think around it. Um, and I just had some cool conversations. So I would love to have him on the show. Uh, unless you're driving, put your hands together for the one, the only Shane Smith, everybody. Oh, hey, how's it going, guys? It's good. <laughs> I'll be real. You guys want the realness? I uh, I woke up at one forty-five, so, I, uh, <laughs> so like ten minutes ago. Okay? Literally like ten minutes ago. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This I mean, is and if you're watching, you're looking at his background. If you know, look, there's a lot of people who know who you are. You're very famous. Uh, 
the background here is exactly what people would expect from you. Yeah. You have what looks like uh, your wall is covered in what looks like Risk, the game Risk. I'm no, not that's, exactly yeah, no, that's Lord of the Rings. That's Lord of the Rings. Christian's right. That's Middle Earth. <laughs> Sorry, I've never read or seen Lord of the Rings. It's one of the one of the three continents uh in uh you know the fictional world where middle earth is set there you go all right yeah we'll we'll we'll, we'll do a deep dive on that on today's show <laughs> i know i like yeah. will love it <laughs> the few cool people that watch our show are just like shutting it off right now yeah all right i'm out <laughs> <It's> immediately <laughs> nah uh, but then also your bed is covered in what looks like what uh you know uh that guy momoa would wear on a on a on a, on a film <laughs> some type of jason momoa yeah. Yeah. Skin, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah i've got furs instead of blankets dude <laughs> you are you are everything about you is so shane smith <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude you gotta run the bear fur man it's so good do you know how i'll get you one it's oh, life changing don't. it's life changing <laughs> you know what because i don't have one of those curved swords so no, i got nothing that matches it you know? dude i'll get you a curvy sword <laughs> i, I, I know you have like a guy in brooklyn dude i got a sword guy <laughs> uh jane uh i'm happy here thanks for joining us yes i, I like to mention you're a, a hilarious comic you do a bunch of uh, uh, other work uh, as well, and uh, and let's start with your uh, your connection to soccer. Right? So you grew up around, uh, you obviously in Utah, around yep. uh, Salt Lake City, uh, and uh, obviously you have a connection to Real Salt Lake. I mean, we have uh, we've had players uh, on from from RSL on the show, people who cover the team, things yep. like that. Uh, what's what's been your experience like? Uh, you know, and your connection to the team. What was like the first game you went to? Why did you go? Uh, how has it influenced yeah, your you, life? You lived there during, like, you know, when it was super popular. Yeah. So I lived there before it was super popular and a and after. So the first uh, uh, MLS match I ever went to, a friend of mine was like, "Hey, because uh, the the RSL that used to just play at the uh, football stadium for the Utah Utes, they didn't even yeah. have. They just like rented out the college stadium. It was it was not great. And so <laughs> I'd never been. I played soccer as a kid a ton, as we all do here in the United States, you know. And uh, which is weird that it doesn't stick so much with adults yeah. well, now. It does, but before. But anyway, so I played." And a friend of mine was like, hey, you like soccer? I was like, yeah, it's cool. It's fun. And he was like, uh, do you want to come with me uh, and get kicked out of the stadium? Uh, because uh, be because Real Salt Lake's playing a show match against China. And uh, we're going to bring a bunch of uh, free Tibet stuff. <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. they were like, and not because they cared. By the way, these are not I'm like a political guy. I do political commentary. It's one of my jobs. This is was not that this guy <laughs> literally was just like, you want to antagonize the other team? Yeah, he was just a fan of getting kicked out of the stadium. <laughs> yeah. was, his political position. Th this was the first time I'd ever realized how intense soccer fans were. He was like, oh, yeah, I want to ruin the other. It's not it's, it's not enough that my team wins. Others must suffer. And I was like, oh, OK. And I went. And of course, they immediately kicked. They kicked us out so fast when we were like holding up signs and going crazy. And they were just like. These these guys gotta go, and I was like, dude, soccer's cool. <laughs> like that was my first experience. That was my first experience. That is hilarious. Uh, so now, when you go to a game, if you have been after and you sit there for the whole ninety minutes, you're like, there's just something missing. You know? <laughs> yeah, dude. Just a je ne sais quoi. <laughs> just surreal. Uh, yeah, that must have been. Um, wait, so uh, when you went to the game and. Uh, uh, like, were you, were you more intrigued as a soccer fan or as, like, trolling the other team? Like, what was the exciting part to you? Well, I just it, – mostly I'll be real. I'm just one of those old school guys. My friend was like, hey, I'm going to get kicked out of a stadium. Do you have my back? And I was like, you know I do, homie. And so I just showed up like, what are we doing, dude? What are we getting into, man? <laughs> could have been, been cricket, anything. Cricket match. It could have been badminton. <laughs> it could have been, could have been Yo, tennis. Yo, we're getting kicked out of here. All right. <laughs> Yo, dude, Serena Williams has been saying some crazy stuff about my sister. Are you ready to roll? And I would just be like – like, dude, I've got the other sister. I like, I will take her. <laughs> you ready to go get kicked out of the U.S. Yeah. Open? Dude? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Did um, did you go to any more games after this? So I did. I ended up coming back uh, a few times, um, and then they made the new stadium 
the yeah. uh and it's Rio, Tinto, right. it's, Rio, Rio Tinto. Tinto is on another level it's so crazy and that's really fun so I've been to a few Rio Tinto games and those are like always sold out everyone's going off the whole time uh they're so rowdy that people who don't like soccer love soccer so yeah <laughs> which is like the move right that's like what the whole that's what it's all about I guess yeah, because you could go to like you could go to a jazz game and you're like, you know about basketball. Yeah, it's kind of a relaxed atmosphere for the most part, unless there's like a really important game. Yeah. But even a friendly in a soccer match, even like, in a, you know, an exhibition match, it's pretty wild. Yeah, for people, people set it off. They go crazy. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Yeah, Which yeah. matches your personality so much, you yeah. know, and that's why I was so interested in just hearing your perspective. Because when we think of Salt Lake, we kind of think of it as like a, not like a, like a, you know, I think more of a librarian than I do of a wild soccer city. But after yeah. meeting you, I'm like, maybe I just don't understand Salt Lake well enough. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was I was there um, last uh, year, right, right before the. Um, uh lockdown and everything i was i went snowboarding in park city and i went to salt lake city to hang out with some rsl fans uh as well and and that's it this is how i always feel whenever i go to uh any city that i presume will be like you know contentious or difficult or or or, or, or i might encounter some sort of prejudice then i meet soccer friends and i'm like yo Salt Lake City's great. It's, so, it's super. Everybody's super nice to me. But I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm only meeting the soccer fans, and that might not be <laughs> indicative of the rest of the population. Dude, Salt Lake's weirdly nice. Everyone's yeah. nice. I think if you live there over time, you'll start to like run into like the weird prejudices you might think exist. But it's a pretty cool place to just hang out and visit. Everyone's pretty sweet. Uh, the soccer fans are just wild, though. Uh, I I don't know that there's very many like. Uh, molly mormons as they would say going to the soccer matches because yeah. they're like selling a lot of booze people are <laughs> you know they're fist fighting and screaming <laughs> and like doing soccer stuff you know okay and they're wearing magic underwear at the same time yeah, 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 yeah. the chastity underwear but god can't you know, see god can't see right. in rento rio tinto stadium you know no, yeah, look, i may not i may not catch an std but you might catch these hands all right we got so much more with shane smith come right back uh after this i'm playing soccer it's really part-time it's before pelé right so yeah. We're making $2,000 for the season. I'm working at the airport at KLM. I'm playing in the German American League, and I'm teaching at, at, a, at a high school out here, Westbury High School, right? The magazine comes out. I must have been 23 years old, the, the high school girls, you know, 16, 17. The magazine comes out. All the girls in the high school go running out, buying the magazine. And, I, and the principal calls me in and fires me, right? He said, you, what did you do? I said, I'm just trying to get exposure for the team because really we had no fans. It, it's not a highlight <laughs> of my career. I mean, when, yeah, I think you might have misunderstood the word exposure, you know? <laughs> <laughs> when marketing people talk about exposure, I think they mean to, <laughs> to a lot of people, not just a lot of you. <laughs> listen, listen, I told you I was making $2,000 playing soccer. They paid me 10 grand to do the magazine. So. <laughs> Hey! Oh, buddy! You do it. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be spreading cheek in front of a photographer in a minute. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the Cool Against Living Room FC. We are here with comedian Shane Smith. Uh, Shane, uh, we have to. Uh, obviously talk about it because you are a person that has a lot of tattoos yeah you clearly have them uh in places you can't really hide uh you have them right on your face uh how big a pair of sunglasses do you own if we're trying to hide these joints do they have to be some elton john joints some yeah. huge situations dude you're more of a tinted face shield kind of a guy. yeah man definitely so uh can, can uh you talk a little bit about the uh, obviously the, the decision, especially, I mean, I think most people can comprehend 
uh, tattoos on your body. But then when once you go neck and face, then you are. It, it's it usually says like you lived a certain lifestyle that yeah. uh, that you know that m many people may not be familiar with. Uh, but what is and then being a comedian is obviously you want to stand out. That's a good way to do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you, the, what you did to your life by being a comedian is what you did to your face by getting tattoos on it. It's I mean, true. that basically says to the world, I work for myself, right? Like, yeah. And I'll just add yeah. it real quick because one time I, I remember before, uh, like, while, while I was doing IT work and, and uh, in between jobs and doing comedy and all this other stuff, I, I would go on interviews and sometimes in uh, one time on, on a second interview, uh, the I nailed the first interview, went great. Second interview, the, the guy turns his monitor he's like can you explain this and he pulls up my website he's like you're a comedian and like I, like if i did something wrong right. uh, <laughs> so, like what can you explain oh. this or like if you pulled up some criminal record uh so i can imagine a face tattoo would make it difficult to just get any day-to-day -day job yeah, it does. Plus, pair for the criminal record. It's like a no go. I literally, dude. I I had a job. I, I tried to get a fake job for us. So I was doing a research for like a movie role I was gonna get, and it was like this big deal. And I was like, oh my gosh. And they're like, you should try and get a job at like Seven Eleven or something to like. So I was like, yeah. okay. And I could not, dude. <laughs> I straight up could get a job at Seven Eleven, dude. I was it's like, great that you could get booked for the role. <laughs> <laughs> so work at Eleven, but you couldn't actually no, no, work no. at Seven Eleven. Yeah, yeah, I was like, this is rough, dude. I gotta make this work because <laughs> I gotta make this work. Yeah, yeah you got no other options. Yeah, sometimes that pressure is uh, is helpful, right? Because it forces you yeah. to really dig deep and find, uh, you know, find some pathway in this in this career path. Yeah, it's a. What, is it Cortez? He burned his ships, and everyone is like, "What?" He got to the new world, and then. And they burned his ships and everyone was like why did you do that and he's like looks like we better win we better get out here and do the thing yeah. there's only one other way out of here yeah, yeah. yeah we're walking now and everyone's like wow baller move kind of honestly oh, yeah. also i don't know what wikipedia websites you read but we we have no idea who cortez is okay uh, no, wait, just, it's... <laughs> someone out there in the world know they're like it's a pretty solid history reference that most of knows. our fans are like Alexis ain't got no clue who Cortez is. Cortez, what, does he, was he play at Arsenal? I don't know. Like, hey, hey, why did my cousin burn shit? He gonna go down with it. <laughs> he played for Spain. Yeah. <laughs> you, you are one of these people that, uh, it's rare to find, but you broke because of uh, some internet clip. You're like, there's like youth players in soccer whose parents will put together highlight reels Mm -hmm. And like hope it goes viral. And it's happened in moments where like they've signed with big teams because of it. That happened for you in comedy. Uh, you were still living in Salt Lake at the time, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I was like struggling and doing the road, which is if those people who don't know when you're a comedian, there's like, uh, there's professional comics and then there's comics who do something called the road, which is like the middle of the country gigs, like doing bars and stuff. Like someone being like, I'll give you $200 if you drive to Montana and perform for this remote outpost, <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. like straight, straight up people being like, you got to stand on the air hockey table and use the speak and spell as a microphone like <laughs> horrific shows and then they string together like a hundred of these shows and so you'll just be on tour for like two months doing these horrific shows and that's what i did for a living for like a year and i was like man this isn't working i have no money i was divorced i was miserable i was just like comedy isn't happening i'm gonna have to like i literally was thinking about like i should i should rob people again that's what i should do <laughs> i was like i have enough money to buy a gun <laughs> it's still, you know it's still on my resume i really yeah. couldn't go back <laughs> you know, it's, it's a special skill and you just don't lose it it's a lot like riding a bike which reminds me i should rob someone's bike <laughs> yeah, dude, i throw it on my resume sometimes <laughs> um, but like I was like dang I should and then I got offered to do this special uh, with this company that does clean comedy and they were like can you do clean comedy and I lied and was like of course I can because I needed money yeah. and so I wrote uh, 40 minutes of clean comedy in six months recorded it and they were like wow this is great how long have you been doing this set and I was like two years buddy or like you know I just <laughs> lied. Dude, I lied so much to get so much work uh, it's like but, asking how much is this and they're like how much you got in your pocket 
<laughs> basically man and so um it came out and i kind of thought like oh it'll amount to nothing i just needed this money right now and then um they put a clip from it and then one day i looked up and it had like 60 million views or something absurd on facebook and millions on youtube and, and i was on the front page of reddit like a couple times and, and then from there my career took off and i was like all right Let's go, boys. Okay. So, what are the odds that it wasn't standing on the air hockey table, huh? Dude, you know what? It, it, sometimes you just got to stand on enough air hockey tables and it works out. <laughs> yeah, that's a poster no one knew they needed in their childhood bedroom, huh? <laughs> I, I did a I did a tour in Ohio. I, I went. This is how deep, how badly I just wanted to be on stage. I rode a. Uh, I've mentioned this a bunch of times. I rode a, I rode a bicycle from uh, from Cincinnati to Cleveland. Uh, and did eight shows along the way. That's how much I deeply wanted uh, just to be performing and wanted st uh, stage time. And one of them um, was in, in Worcester, Ohio, at this brewery that was like, and like the central Ohio was super like religious. Yeah. And I literally performed in front of a crucifix. Like it, it must have been <laughs> 25 feet tall. Like I literally, like the crowds in front of me and behind them, is a crucifix. He's uh, just watching them like, what, <laughs> laugh. What are yeah. you going to laugh at? Which one are you going to? You land all your punchlines with your arms out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, end, I end every every joke with, nailed it. And then that's my new thing. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I and R and R I. For me, it stands for king of the jokes, though. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, that, that's pretty much the uh, uh, stand standard uh you know uh you know road stories when the, the, the middle of the country is not usually the most fun place to perform uh overall but, yeah. but it's also like the type of shows like when you start or when you're at a place where you're not a draw yourself yeah you'll yeah. do anything you know like when christian gets that phone call they're like dude you want to do eight shows in ohio you're like absolutely you gotta write you gotta ride a bike the whole way you're like well, I'm there. Everybody said yes. <laughs> you're gonna be in a hamster wheel through uh, half of the country are you okay with this you know what <laughs> does the microphone work i'll be there <laughs> yeah exactly I mean, I've, I've literally been at a bowling alley doing jokes between like watching someone waiting for them to throw the ball and then being like all right now you can hear me like you know what i mean <laughs> so yeah. bad so bad Buddy, we've all been there there's some folks listening to this right now who saw us at the last uh supporters council who knows every time a door opened the karaoke room next door would bring it in <laughs> as they're trying to crush yeah. so it's just people singing these songs super loud we got more with shane smith we get back after this And it's amazing to me that you're doing things with, uh, you know, uh, urban development for food, because I grew up in an area that was very much a food desert. I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. So I saw that firsthand. You know, if we wanted food, we went to a bodega and I was like, yeah, I got food. I got mac and cheese. And they warmed it up for me for an extra 50 cents. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm going to be fine. Some you know, hot Cheetos. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, you could throw the flame of hot Cheetos in the mac <laughs> and cheese. And I don't know if you know that that's <laughs> low key pretty great with a little bit of the Chinese food hot sauce. Let's go. OK. <laughs> Anybody want to know why I got high blood pressure? <laughs> oh yeah, going you. I'm gonna show you. Uh oh. All right, baby, we're back on the Coolian's living room FC, and we are here with Shane Smith, hilarious comedian. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the the city of Salt Lake, where you're from, right? Because you even mentioned you got asked, "Will you do a clean comedy set?" Yes, you know, or or like an hour long special. No one's ever asked me to do a clean set. They're like, yeah, the kid's from Jersey. He just he doesn't have it in him. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just not possible for me to not curse in 45 minutes. Ask the producers of the show. They'll tell you the same. When a city like that, how is it that when it gets to the soccer stadium, it's absolutely rambunctious? Like, you grew up on the outskirts, right? You lived in Fillmore, yeah. if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, yeah, the boonies. Yeah. Right. So is it a bit rougher once you get it? It's just the downtown that's nice. Like what? Tell me a little bit about Salt Lake because I'm trying to understand where are all these crazy soccer fans coming from? If everyone else is like, "Good day, sir." You know? <laughs> well, the the culture in Salt Lake is super weird because for in a place where you have like really really clean culture, you're always going to have the antithesis, right? You have the counterculture. So Utah's full of like maniacs. And of course, Utah's like a, a cowboy state. So it has like bikers and like ne'er do well 
dolls and people just in the middle of nowhere. Um, but dude, the the culture of like sports in Utah is nuts. Like even the Jazz, when people talk about basketball there, other players they're like, yeah, it's the craziest stadium to go to. Like they they're they're nuts. And then yeah. you then you take that to soccer, and soccer is already like, yeah, we're crazy, it's our thing. And then Salt Lake is like, bet we will show you. And then they go even crazier, you know. And so, so it's, it's just it, like this crazy. It's point. like their only release, and yeah. I mean that literally. Uh, this yes. a, little, a, a little bit of a uh, kind of rebellious, uh, you know, uh, thing to do. Like maybe you, there aren't many places where you can just you, you know straight up yell. Like because because even with the Jazz, the Jazz have dealt with a couple issues. Remember they had the the, the like kind of racist incidents with some of the uh, R- Russell Westbrook yeah. and things like that, where yeah. some of these fans were just like. <sighs> straight up crazy like out of pocket oh um, dude yeah they're so, nuts yeah so there is that that like the the the, the incredibly nice and, po- uh, and politeness of of, of of people from utah but yes. then you, you you have the you know i mean we saw like what was going on in uh, at the capitol right but you have those like crazy people uh that are protesting or whatever at, 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 at like the state capitol in, in utah and things like that yeah yeah i mean uh, people are uh, in in utah like yeah and then you don't have a lot of places like there's not a lot of dancing there's not a lot of partying <laughs> there's not a lot of like there's not like a, a real hookup culture or whatever so when you finally get the chance to just like go crazy it, when people are like yeah i guess it's soccer like get a little wild <laughs> dude people it's it's the state Stadium is crazy. People are drunk like it's a bar. Everyone's <laughs> drunk. People have never been drunk before. Drunk. People are like is it making out and like, dude, it's wow. it's literally just like it's it's Sodom and Gomorrah. It's like the one. <laughs> just, dude, it's like the, the bathrooms they're doing. I think you're the one who explained this to me. So Provo soaking or whatever. It's yeah, called. dude. Oh no, yeah. That's when you 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 start to have sex, but then you just chill. <laughs> yeah. Don't it doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> it, I, that's the weird. When you explain it to me, I'm like, this is. I've got to go just because it's the weirdest place on earth. Yeah, it sounds like a weird, like a like a, a a Utah like version of hedonism. You know what I mean? Like, like a getaway. Oh, yeah. that a soaker, dude. <laughs> yeah. One of the other things you're explaining to me is that, uh, and this is why it confuses me as to why it gets so rowdy. There's drive-through soda spots. Yeah, where you yeah. Can mix colas. Soda stores, man. They have the soda spots, so they have like stores Never. that only You're sell saying this soda. Like, <laughs> like when I explain to you a bodega, you know what I mean? <laughs> we have bodegas in, t- but like, the, yeah. So we have soda bars, which is like a legit place where like you go get a soda with your sweetheart or whatever. <laughs> so then what you mix? It's just like yeah, let me get a Coke and she'll have a Pepsi. I don't know how we're married. I, like no, they have they have like th- two hundred different sodas to do they have like artisanal soda or whatever like a brewery wow. dude it's wild yeah and, and there's you, places where you can mix like like flavors yeah absolutely yeah absolutely and, and this is like fun i don't know <laughs> just want to be yeah, clear so, listen if you're if you're like um uh, a mormon man in utah and you're mm. like i'm gonna take my girl out but you can't go to a bar well, you're plural, not gonna, plural. You, yeah girl you're not gonna dance you're not gonna go to a bar you're not gonna dance like there's no there's not a lot going on you know you're like how do i kill this time you go to the soda bar with your sweetheart and you talk about scripture or whatever i don't know yeah yeah or mixing different you know have a threesome with corn syrup exactly and then and then i went almond flavored first he's a freak (laughs) and then because that they have that culture specifically like the very very religious people kind of facilitate that culture and then of course that culture accidentally spills onto people like me you know and i'm like yeah I, I guess if it's there i'll go to the soda bar with my lady like whatever and next thing you know i'm at the soda bar too man is there one at rio tinto yeah uh probably yeah yeah i'm sure that'd be so dope yeah i kind of want to experience flavors this. dude yeah what would what, what would be in order like what i because i'm wildly confused like what would be like a what would be a regular order and then what would be the shane order which is probably crazy oh dude <laughs> it's, it's, what you do is you get uh so i like diet mountain dew uh i gotta get diet i'm trying to watch my figure you know but then you ask him to put in <laughs> like not any uh, less extreme but <laughs> diet, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly thank you you ask him to- diet code red <laughs> <laughs> dude diet code red would be sick that's a hard one to get so 
So if then you ask him, you're like, hey, I want to have two pumps of grape and they throw some grape in there, dude. Ooh. <laughs> It's just grape flavor? Yeah, flavor. They have all these flavors, so they have the, all these crazy sodas, and then they have all these flavorings, and they, like, put flavoring in there, like like at Starbucks, dude. <laughs> this is great. Like, just, and you, I'm assuming you did not, uh, you're not Mormon, you didn't grow up Mormon. No. Uh, did, did, how did you, do you, like, do you, are you sometimes shunned in, uh, by Mormon? I, like, what is it like not being Mormon in yeah. In Utah, if you're around like a, a big community of, of Mormons. So now as an adult, it's like a non-issue, right? Because like other adults are just like, he's an adult doing whatever adults do. But when I was young, it was tough. Like I could date, you know, people wouldn't want to date me because I was like the bad kid or whatever. And people would be weird. And I was in Scouts. And, you know, Scouts is like based around the the majority religion in your area. So like if you're Catholic, you go to Catholic Scouts or whatever. Right. And so I was always with like the Mormon kids doing scout stuff and just like really bumming them out you know <laughs> just super <laughs> super bumming everybody out yeah, you're just drinking like, an iced tea and you're like this is a no huh <laughs> oh dude i brought i brought porno mags to a camp out once dude oh my god you would not believe <laughs> I was like, I wish this, I wish the scout master molested us instead of this because <laughs> this is so much worse. <laughs> this dude's a prude, you know? <laughs> Chill out, bro. <laughs> they were losing it, man. Yeah, you would think, uh, you know, especially like young boys would be excited about that and then, and, and, you know, it'd be a talking point. Dude, about, like, one of the other kids was like, wait, I brought one. It's just ankles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even getting, did I show a kid what he was like, what are you looking at? I was like, you want to see? And I thought he was going to be pumped. And I was like, bam, your titties, bro. And he, <laughs> dude, he cried. He oh. felt so guilty that he cried. And I was like, my bad, dude. I was oh. like, I you know, I, I sometimes cry uh, around titties, but because they're so beautiful. You know? Right, right, right. For a different reason. <laughs> it's like joy. Oh, did he also slow clap? Because that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> the first time someone showed me, I'm like, damn. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, uh, we okay. could do a whole podcast just on you going to uh, Mormon camp. That alone yeah. is a series. Okay, uh, we got more uh, with Shane Smith coming up after this. Come back, everybody. <laughs> Another one in the books. Thank you, Shane Smith, uh, for joining us today. We got to learn uh, so much about Utah. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm glad. Yeah, it's that more we... than maybe you wanted to learn. Maybe. <laughs> okay. uh, Shane, is there anything you want to let people know about before we sign off today? Yeah, uh, you can watch me at twitch.tv slash Shadozer. I stream video games and stuff there. You can come hang out. Uh, my socials are all at Shadozer, S-H-A-Y-D-O-Z-E-R. Um, and uh, I have a podcast called Cowboy Boys you can listen to. Uh, okay. And that's it. That's it. All right. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, support uh, Shane. Uh, check out his comedy. Again, he's a, a hilarious comic. So make sure you do that uh, as well. Uh, and make sure you follow us as well uh, at Soccer Cooligans yeah. on all social media channels. Follow at Fubo Sports uh, as well. And subscribe to the Fubo Sports YouTube channel for full episodes of the show. Uh, all right, Shane, we're going to end the show the way we normally do, as is tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, so for Shane Smith, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerreros. And together, what are we? <gasps> the, the Cooligans! Cooligans! <laughs> Boom. <laughs>